Oh, already having a good time this morning with uh, City Councilman Steve Massengill. Good morning. Good morning. So, an interesting City Council meeting last or yesterday afternoon, I guess. Yeah, I mean, did you get home? Did you get home for for dinner? dinner I sure did. It was my wife's birthday, and I did Uh get home for dinner last night. uh, you know, we had some interesting topics last night. We 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 talked. We uh, worked on a variety of topics from city bus. Uh, we we talked about some, uh, and we can spend some time on it today. McAllister Park. Uh, we awarded uh, the second phase of the uh, airport terminal uh, renovation, which is significant. Well, let's start out talking about McAllister Park. This this is something that I, uh, quite honestly, have. If I haven't followed in, in the news, so this will all be news to me. Uh, so we're doing um, updates at McAllister Park, I understand, and uh, most of this is going to be private donations. So question mark. First, you can't you can't talk about McAllister Park without tipping your hat to Councilman Christian. Uh, he he he's done yeoman's work on this. He's taken he this is his project to be frank, and uh, he's taken the lead on it. He's formed a group called the Friends of McAllister Park. And just to um, investigate what might be out in, and just to familiarize your listeners, McAllister Park is the triangle between uh, what three twenty seven, uh, Marsha Sharp, and Milwaukee. It's a big yeah, triangle. Right. There, there's a there's a little league field complex mm-hmm. there to the oh, west. Our Challenger Little League field yep. is there mm-hmm. for the and disabled. Milwaukee lies to the east, and it's mostly undeveloped. It's got a retention pond in it. It's got a Frisbee disc golf course thing in it. Uh, There's a primitive jogging trail that's been worked on recently and that you can walk or run on. But uh, through that group, um, Councilman Christian had attracted a someone who was interested in privately donating some some money, which is really going to give the project a boost. And what was we discussed yesterday was the master plan for McAllister Park, which would include what I thought was interesting, um, a covered pavilion for basketball courts, mm-hmm. uh, a food truck court. Um, it had hammocks. Hammocks that that I, I know you, that, that I know weird. you're you're already excited about. Well, it's just I, I kind of wonder if the homeless are going to go from downtown I mean, and decide to come to it, Southwest. It, it looks Lowe's. big enough that maybe like when if you, <laughs> when y'all get off the show after this is done, you and Dave could go relax in a hammock. Or, you know, I'd be okay with that in the same hammock. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, I don't want to be in the same thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'll relax in my recliner. Uh, uh, well, a hammock. Now, tell me, I have not seen a hammock in a city park either here or anywhere else. Well, doesn't they, mean they, they don't exist. They showed us pictures last night, so, it, you know, it, it, it does happen. Do they use uh, cloth hammocks, or are they, uh, do, do they uh, have it out of something we'll, else? We'll have to talk to Randy yeah, that's about that. some my wires pay grade, put in there yeah. to make sure it's stronger? Or? I'm sure it's reinforced. I, I'm yeah. sure it's not your I, typical I, uh, camping I, hammock. I think Randy has a lot of great ideas maybe this is not his best one but anyway that's <laughs> hey, just, that's I, just my personal opinion i'm not opinion. against it i just want to know more about it that's all there is to it well i'll let you know? I'll, I'll let i'll let uh, councilman christian expand well, on that next time he's on <laughs> uh, he'll be here not in two weeks but in four weeks okay so he'll be here uh, well he 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 has a lot more information on yeah. it but and i'll you know, bet he's listening this morning i'm too. sure he is we're probably about to get a he'll probably have to correct me maybe if i if i mess yeah, why don't up, you text so. in if you're listening there randy um we'd like a little explanation on this hammock anyway thing. there's a there's a there's a, a walking bridge a, a, a boardwalk i guess you call it so that there's some um parking involved um the city's already funded out of uh out of the budget this year uh dog park there on the uh, north side of the park so many well, no. great things happening at McAllister Park which no. we consider a regional park it's a regional park in district 5 so there's not um there's not a dog park there yet though right that's correct yeah it's it's in the works dog yeah. parks are big and they're popular now, there's without oh, yeah. a doubt well, this, and, uh, this country has gone dog crazy. I'm so telling. one of the big questions I have, uh, and, and I think that uh, apparently the council was asking a lot of questions about this as well, is the funding. Uh, is this all going to be private? Is the council going to, or the city going to have to put money into this at all? Uh, how is all that going to work? Well, the majority of this project, I mean, again, this project couldn't happen without uh, the private funding it does have. There's some general fund dollars, but not compared to the private funding. And Part of the plan on this is some sponsorship. So, for example, it may be the KFYO Basketball Pavilion. And as we had that discussion, 
and, and the other thing that comes into that discussion is 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 naming rights. Uh, you know, do we want to name, you know, the water fountains, the Dave King water fountains, and do we and do we want to have a discussion or a policy about whose name we put on what when it's city property? Yeah. And so that turned into. Uh, and, and I can tell you from a prior experience when I served on a different governing body that we had some naming opportunities of schools and we realized we didn't have a policy. And, you know, I think where the discussion ended up yesterday is it would benefit the current council and future councils if we would establish a policy around some sponsorship opportunities as they may come up in other areas and naming rights as it applies to city facilities. So like how much someone would have to donate to get naming rights or, I mean, is that what we're talking about? Well, you, I think you l- might have rules a dis- around naming rights. You, you, you might have a discussion about, uh, do you name anything after somebody that's living? Uh, generally. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like. <laughs> Name I'd like. After I want Confederate hero. I can see the Dave King fishing pond. Uh, yeah, so you know, I think you have to, uh, okay, have some policy around that. We got to go, and uh, we it is seven fourteen. We'll be back in a moment with uh, more of Councilman Massengale and uh, information about the city of Lubbock. I want to remind you, our, if you have a question, our text lines are open at eight zero six six eight zero two seven ninety. Back with more in a moment. Uh, a couple of textures this morning. He says, uh, laughing out loud, images of uh, Matt and Dave in hammocks, uh, visions of Gilligan's Island come to mind, uh, seeing legs and arms flying around trying to get in. And then we have somebody that doesn't think much of our citizens' tower, and that was going to be my next question to the councilman. He says, how about waste management citizens' tower? After all, it's a dumpster fire. Well, no, I, I think that's unfair. Yeah, I'm not aware of a dumpster fire. <laughs> um, I chair the facilities committee, so I'm briefed almost daily on it right now. But uh, and uh, there is uh, you you tell us that there's going to be uh, some that will move in uh, on uh, November first. Well, we 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 have a need for some departments to start moving in prior to that. But uh, as we've talked about many times, we still think we're on track to begin the move-in process. Early November, um, I thought it was. I thought the city manager said it best. Moving in is not an event; it's a process. So, um, it's coming together quickly. Uh, there's still a lot to do, but uh, we're uh, optimistic. What, what about hammocks in the lobby of? Uh... No hammocks planned oh, to be in okay. the lobby. I had a reason to go Citizens hang out Tower. there. You know? Randy Christian is listening this morning. Uh oh. Okay, here's the scoop on the hammocks. You ready? Uh huh. Just for you, Matt. Oh, yeah, he's got us both here. Hammock havens have poles and eye hooks. You bring your own hammock. City does not provide hammocks. Very popular. There are some on the Texas Tech campus. Hey, no, I guess that's okay because it's just going to be the, the things that hold the hammock. Well, I was wondering, you know, how many, how often are you going to have to repair those hammocks? Well, that's but what you I was bring wondering. Your what, own if, hammock. what if somebody came to cut them or whatever? Well, there you, there you go. You bring your own hammock. Yeah. They're okay. just providing the eye hooks. Ah. Okay, that worked pretty well. Uh, Connor says he has a hammock, so that's where he'll be heading. Okay, uh, now, um, city bus. Now, uh, Councilman, I'm seeing uh, some buses running around that says that they are electric. We're we're using eco-friendly electric buses now? We do have a couple of electric buses. They're... Um are we, uh, do we planning on uh, com- converting to a complete eco-friendly f- fleet? You know, I don't know that we'd have these if we didn't have the opportunity to take advantage of, of, of some uh, federal grants. Uh, s- that's something City Bus worked on. They're cool buses. I've been on them. Uh, but, you know, City Bus, we talked about City Bus yesterday. Uh, city Bus is probably not important to the three of us in this room, but it is important. There's a, a lot of citizens that depend Absolutely. on it public transportation a lot of people get to work that way and that's and important when you look at the route and the way that the city has grown there's areas that we don't serve well um, and uh, so we have have um, initiated a study that started in july and we got an interim update on it yesterday trying to de- determine what those what city bus route the routes need to look like and um it's very, very interesting information, especially when you compare us to other cities. The the uh, firm doing the study uh, worked hard to compare us to cities with universities. Um, half a city bus's business is Texas Tech. Really? 
it is. If you can imagine, City Bus is the buses on campus, uh, and so there is a business relationship with Texas Tech as it applies to City Bus. But uh, and we've looked at different models. You know, I mean, the world's changing. Uh, for example, um, it, the, the mayor and I uh, last year spent some time in a community that didn't have. Uh, public transportation system served by buses and so they've implemented a hybrid ride share system and so they have a lot of smaller vans and there's an app and you can um you know get get you a ride it may require you to walk a couple of blocks you're probably going to ride with somebody else and the guaranteed fare is three dollars now that city subsidizes their public transit system as do we. We subsidize city bus with tax dollars somewhere in the tune of about $3 million, if I'm remembering correctly. And so we're just looking at what what is a more successful model. We'll look at the fares. We'll look at the routes. Uh, I'm not so sure that we don't have a need for a second transfer station. Uh, the, we have one transfer station today, and it's on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, and and maybe the one on Broadway isn't located where it needs to be, you know. So, um, we'll continue to look at that. It's interesting information. If you have time to go back and walk, watch the work session, you might find it interesting. But we spent a lot of time talking on that, yeah. about that yesterday. Well, and and you you know you're right. Probably the three of us don't use city bus. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever been on a city bus other than one that is rented for maybe a party or something, mm-hmm. but not well, on say, a regular maybe, route. Maybe going to the football stadium yeah. or something. I've, yeah, I've ridden it to the <laughs> right. football stadium before. There's but people that have, get up every day and go to work on city bus. They do, and that's it's highly important. Uh, and and sometimes it's just something that we don't see, we mm-hmm. overlook. Um, and anyway, um, electric buses, I'm sure will – well, I'm, I'll be interested to see how those work out. I, you know, I hope they do. Um, let's see couple of minutes left here. Uh, what about, uh, let's see, airport terminal is on the uh, on the agenda yesterday. So if you've been uh, in and out of the airport in the recent months, you've seen the uh, first phase of uh, airport terminal renovation, which was the consolidated rental car facility. I was out there this weekend and noticed that we've removed all the old buildings, the old rental car building that's really cleaned it up. Um, Second phase of that is roof and mechanical, and that's underway currently. And then last night, we've awarded the last phase, which will be the sizzle part of the project, the actual terminal uh, renovation. And so, you know, if you use the airport a lot, you know that our you have to carry your bag through. You know, you check your bag in with the airline, and then you got to carry it over to the TSA screening tunnel, and all that will move back to the back of the house. We'll shift all baggage claim to. what we call the Southwest baggage claim today. There'll be three baggage claims there. Um, Security will be bigger. We'll actually have a bigger area, you know, that thing bottlenecks at times. And so overall floor coverings, walls, everything will be updated, uh, including, you know, the front of the, the, the public side of the terminal where you arrive. Well, and I'll say, I, I don't know that it's changed much, in a very long time. You're absolutely I correct. I mean, I think uh, even back in the probably late 80s, early 90s, we were going in there, and I don't know that it's changed yeah, that, much. That, that facility was originally constructed in 76 and was expanded a few years after that, and it's still the same exposed aggregate rock on the walls, and it is very dated. Um, we laugh about you know, you when you roll your bags in there, there we have these brick floors. Mm-hmm. Okay. And those yeah, we've got to run. We're up against the okay. clock. I'll uh, finish that uh, sorry for the interruption, but we'll uh, take this seven thirty break and be back with more Matt and Dave in the morning on KFYL after this. And we are back here on KFYL mornings with Matt and Dave. And uh, with us this morning again, uh, City Councilman Mass and Gale. Good uh, good morning. Good morning. Let me finish my thought before the break on the uh, floor in the airport. So the brick floor in the airport was built before suitcases had wheels. Tell me this. A question as a burning question I've always wondered. Why didn't they figure out that wheels on suitcases was a good idea before then? I don't know. You know, I guess that's the way, you know, somebody had a good idea. Well, I just, I thought maybe you knew. So when we're done, your suitcase will not click as you walk into the airport. 
Yeah. Oh. But the airport renovation, I believe there'll be some renderings online, and uh, if anyone has any questions, they can reach out. Uh, but I'm, it's a it'll be a nice remodel. I'm gonna be really mean. Were the bricks put on the uh, streets before we had wheels on vehicles? Well, that's a great point. I mean, wheels on vehicles <laughs> just, and wheels on suitcases, I can't speak to. I'm just Matt, Matt kidding. Matt hates the brick streets. I don't like the brick streets. I think uh, they're a mess out there. No. Uh, they'd be okay if they were all level Matt, and they were okay, a, but it's That was the WPA project uh, because it involved well, a it whole was. lot of labor mm-hmm. back during we, the Depression. We, we talk about the brick streets, I guess, every time we're on. Uh-huh. I, I think... I know, that's why I just threw a jab out there. I'm going to bring up the brick streets uh, during our uh, council planning just session. Just for Matt? Just for Matt. Okay. No, I agree with him. I mean, I think it has. we've got to do something about the brick streets, but uh, we have our uh, annual council planning session in late October, and uh, I anticipate there will be a discussion well, about br- brick streets. Talking about brick streets, uh, what's going on downtown? There's a lot going on downtown still, you know. Uh, if you haven't been by Buddy Holly Hall, it continues to uh, uh, come to completion. That uh, uh, Cotton Court Hotel, I mean, they are coming on on that uh, next door to Wells Fargo. Yeah. So they're, you know, and we'll be uh, vacating City Hall here at the end of the year and uh, look forward to South Plains College getting started on their project in that building. Mm-hmm. So uh, one thing that I remember there was a, a lady that was trying to get something started with splash pads, and I know that uh, I think the mayor has said that he's behind splash pads. I could be wrong, but I think that's right. Have, I think has that's there right. been any discussions behind that? Yeah, I mean we um, we talk about pools. I think when uh, in this planning session, you'll hear us talk more about pools. We our community is not like, unlike other communities where we we built pools in the '60s and the '70s, and they're old now. And quite frankly, some of them are not very well utilized, and so. I think the discussion goes very quickly on what if you replaced some or possibly all of those, depending on the pleasure of the council, with splash pads. And at that point, you just have to figure out how to correctly fund it. Yeah. Do, do, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm for first, splash pads. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be a lot of fun if you were a kid. I, uh, um, uh, but let me ask you this, uh, and, and for my own personal reasons, uh, do, you, do you have any idea why uh, some of the uh, that swimming pools seem to be less utilized today. You know, I think the the Y's done a great job in their in their work and rebuilding Sun and Fun, and then they are on they have a new project on University that I think eventually will have a pool. I think projects like that probably um, yeah. draw some of the, the that business away. I, you know, maybe you don't go because it's not as you know the. the I've been through all the pools. The facilities are not great. Okay, they're they're not great, and uh, and I'm sure that deters some people. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we've uh, we've got uh, on our list, of course, we uh, about citizens. We want to talk about Citizens Tower. Is it? Uh, well, I think we already kind of covered that, didn't we? There'll mm-hmm. be some. Uh, some will be moving in as early as November first. That's maybe some before. Uh, yeah. we, tomorrow we we've been giving various tours. Tomorrow, uh, we're 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 hosting the former council members and mayors of the city of Lubbock, uh, and we're going to take them through the tower. The big question is, when are they going to break ground on the new parking garage? Soon. Uh, we're already clearing the lot, and so I, I you know, my You're, guess is for with the information I have. Within the next sixty days, I think you're going to see some activity. And on the it. architecture work is already done on it, and the plan and all. Yeah, there's some engineering, but it's a pre. You know, we opted for prefab uh, wow. construction, which was the most economical, and so um, it's not. You know, it is. They've got some work to do on it, but it doesn't require the um, length of time other projects do when it comes to architecture and engineering. Mm-hmm. Okay. 7.41 a.m., Dave King, Matt Martin, in the mornings here on KFYO. We'll return with Councilman Massengale after this. And we're back here on KFYO mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin and City Councilman uh, Steve Massengale. Um, see, where were we there? Did we get everything covered that we wanted to talk about? Well, I, I did want to ask also on the, the new police stations, how is everything moving as far as those? Is there any... Uh, are we on schedule? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we should. 
That actually, that east uh, substation should break ground any time, and then um, you know, month to six weeks. Hopefully, after that, we'll um, break ground on south and then move on to the north. And then y'all have uh, y'all. Have, I guess the the uh, city manager has boiled it down to three police chiefs. Do we have an ETA at all of, of when y'all expect to hire one of them? We don't. Although there's a, a reception tonight to meet them. And so uh, we will all be there and meet them and visit with them tonight. And uh, we'll anticipate uh, Mr. Atkinson's decision shortly. Okay. Well, I did want to ask you about uh, the electric meters, the smart meters. Okay. And I know um, you've been reading Matt's mind. I know that was his big concern with him. Isn't that right, Matt? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> I just want to know if you have a report on... Anything well, you can tell us about Matt and what he's been thinking? No, but the the uh, it's the been smart very <laughs> difficult to read his mind. No. <laughs> smart meter, advanced meters have continued to be installed across the city. Uh, I think we're at about, I think about forty percent of those have been installed. Um, That's quicker than I would have imagined. Yeah, they they continue. You know, you got to catch people at home. People have dogs and in, in the backyard. So, you know. N- some meters are in the alley. Older neighborhoods are attached to to the house, so it, it's still a work in progress. Uh, there are some common myths associated with these. Um, I guess I would encourage everybody not to believe everything you read on the internet. Uh, at the end of the day, it's going to a provide us entry. Uh, you have to have smart meters installed to, to move into ERCOT, and you have to have a smart meter to opt into competition. It also gives you the ability to manage your energy. I mean, w- once everything is up and running, you're gonna you're gonna have more control. You're gonna understand what you're using mid month. You'll help to, if you're someone if you desire to budget your energy use, that that will be available to you. Well, and y'all are doing smart water meters right now as well. Are mm-hmm. about to start putting mm-hmm. those in. Yep, uh, some some of those the installation on those are more yep. dif- difficult, but you gotta dig them up. This would be an opportunity for you to explain to us. Uh, exactly how a smart meter works. Uh, is it? A, does it have some kind of a Bluetooth element that can tell you how how much your refrigerator is running and and uh, how much your air conditioner is running and, and specific no. uses no. of electricity? It, it's going to just show your cumulative use of energy. It it's a device with a radio wave that's got, um, you know, we we uh, install receivers ever so often in neighborhoods and so you know and periodically i don't know if it's once a day or once every two days but it you know it's going to send a signal and talk about uh transmit the energy usage so uh, we can um uh have that data for billing now it also does things like we know instantly if your electricity is down now and we can also it also provides you the ability to if you bought a new home and you're ready to turn the power on, you can call L P and L and they can punch a button and turn your power on. No more sending a man out to swap uh, the meter. That's so, so it uh, provides for other things too. That, well, and from that aspect, uh, as far as the electricity going down, uh, will it help them pinpoint where the problem is? Absolutely. I guess? It gives us a lot more data mm-hmm. as far as that goes. Hmm. So uh is this going to be uh uh, I mean, wh- where are you going to get this information on your on your phone with a, through an app or? Eventually, you you the consumer side of it will have an app, and um, you you'll be able to pay your bill through that app, and you'll also be able to see your energy usage. Was, okay, well that's neat. So I got a question from seven two four. They want to know uh, if the city council knows anything about the future of the old Rager Dykes buildings, and uh, want to know if they'll join the collection of other dilapidated and boarded up buildings downtown. Uh, I don't have any specific or any, any no. insider information on that. I know they're listed and for sale on the market. I know that people, I have heard that entities have looked at those buildings. They're also renovated, unlike a lot of the ones they, that are They were nicely up. renovated. I don't feel like they'll be end up being boarded up buildings. I feel like um, with the energy downtown that um, you'll see somebody uh, move into those buildings. Well, we have another uh, texture that says, Councilman, we're... Uh, why aren't we fixing the drainage in the city? I'm, I'm tired of roads flooding when it rains an inch. Waiting for it to dry is not a good policy. Well, I, I suspect uh, my two cents worth would be we're living in an area that is flat. Yeah, we, 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 we live in a big flat area, and uh, we had a lot of rain. What was it, Monday? We, right, Monday. 
And yes, the streets flood, but if you'll notice, they do for the most, not everywhere, but for the most part, our stormwater drainage system does a pretty good job and it drains that water off fairly quickly. Yeah. We, we, I think the three of us were discussing that off air before we started. It's a lot this better week. than it used to be. We'll definitely say that. It's not the times, I, you know, I always use this example. I grew up over in Milne Park and I remember to get the day loot, you'd get the rains come in and. Leroy Elmore would flood, and we'd see the dumpsters float out of the alleys. Yeah, and and that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, that's right. No, I, I'm I've been amazed at how the interconnection, the drainage system uh, between the all the Playa Lakes. I wouldn't have thought that it would have drained as quickly as it does, but it it, it in a. Uh, I remember that rain, that ten inch rain we had a cup. Uh, well, it's been a long time ago. Uh, I think it rained 10 inches in a 24-hour period. And I mean, to tell you, it was, uh, they were flooding everywhere. Yeah. And I think that's the one uh, that uh, caused the city to take seriously the, that connecting those Playa Lakes. And they did shortly thereafter. And it works well. Yeah. And as a reminder, when we talk about this infrastructure that drains the water off on these rains, that's where your stormwater dollars are, go. Right. And... Uh, in the budget this uh, that we just approved just recently, we decreased the stormwater fee, and we hope to continue to decrease okay. that we stormwater fee. we got one more fee. quick question here. Uh, this person from 773, they said, I'd like to know whether Lubbock Animal Services budget was reduced from the prior fiscal periods. I don't believe it was. No. Okay. I, I can check said, on that. I... It says uh, L.A.'s now will charge for owner surrendered pets which is going to have horrible ramifications i don't know are, are we well are there we is a, there is a fee in the new budget on owner surrender and then it's also different if your owners what's happened is with the changes of lubbock animal shelter we've become a regional shelter and we were we give yeah. are given examples of uh, people are driving from as far as big spring to surrender pets well should a citizen of Big Spring get the same benefit as a taxpayer of Lubbock when it comes to animal services? So there's a higher rate if you're surrendering and you're not a citizen. Yeah, there you go. Uh, 7.52 a.m., let's take a quick break and then come back for uh, and close out our conversation this morning with uh, Councilman Mass and Gill after this. News Talk, 95.1 FM, 790 AM. This is KFYL Mornings. Matt and Dave here on your radio, along with uh, Councilman Steve Massengale. Uh, we had a texture this morning, uh, Councilman, that says, why is Avenue L being closed at 9th Street? So Avenue L at 9th Street is um, originally just west of the property that we had identified as the police headquarters, city property. And we were approached by a group of investors, if you'll recall, that offered us a very beneficial land swap. Uh, to, they ended up moving the headquarters south of Citizens Tower. Those investors have a development on board, uh, housing that I believe is residential, that they own that block and they own the block due west. And that Avenue L is a weird one-way uh, street, strange one-way street it kind of curves around and uh so we were approached to close it and um uh determine what the traffic impact was and i think it's probably um traffic engineering has found out it, it was it is beneficial and i think you'll also see as a result of that see some consideration of um, some of our one-way streets uh, going back to two-way streets downtown Okay, so it's going to be closed permanently. It's never mm -hmm. opening again. Yeah, they're going to they're going to build apartments. I believe there. they're going to build over it. Okay, and then, uh, but you said that it's possible that at a later date, the one way streets are going to go two way. Well, I think they're good. that's under con they're considering that at this okay. point. But I think you'll see some of that adjust, and I think that's part of a bigger discussion about what traffic patterns look like downtown as it redevelops, what parking looks like downtown. Are we going to allow angled parking? Mm -hmm. And, and things like that. Yeah. Okay, Councilman, that's, uh, we're coming up against the clock, the 8 o'clock clock. Uh, glad to have you in, as always. A uh, lot of good, useful information this morning. A lot of audience participation also. You bet. Glad to, have, glad to be here, guys. Okay.